Welcome to another tutorial. This time I'll be showing you a few things about war. I've chosen uh, Hosta Tully to be our guide during uh, Robert's Re uh, Rebellion here. So we're going to fight in this war, as you can uh, as you can see. Now, with war, you have your men here. These are your men. You raise your men, you have your army. But you can increase these amount of men here by uh, making your vassals like you a bit more. Now, a good way to do that would be to uh, find who has the most men, which is uh, Lord Edmure here of Harrenhal. You'd then award him an honorary title, Cupbearer. Now, that would increase his rating of you. There's currently 15,000 available levy. If you made him your Cupbearer, that would make him like you a bit more. There's now 16,000 levy. Let me go to someone else. Jason Malister here. He he's likes you quite a bit. He's got a few men. If you make him the uh, make him the Paramount Knight, you have a look at that. You then uh, go over here. Now seventeen thousand. So you can do stuff like this to uh, to increase the amount of men available to you in your wars. So instead of just raising your men, you just go through like here. Make sure make sure everybody everybody's happy. Lord Bracken. Make him master the hunt. Sure, he didn't, uh, he didn't like that very much. Uh, Lord Piper here. Make him um, master the horse. Sure, he will enjoy that. And Lord Terrick will make you the uh, keeper of swans. So now I have eighteen odd thousand available men. So we're going to go ahead and raise everyone. Now you can see they are scattered all over the place. That's because each individual lord holds his own uh, county of men. Everyone holds their own amount of men. You don't have a standing army in uh, Crusader Kings 2. You can't declare war with your men standing like this. They have to be unraised. That's why, uh, that's why they're all scattered about like this. Because in their day job, they're a farmer. you got to call the men. they got to like grab their weapons from where they live. So... You get that. You have 25,000 men. You want to group them all together to have the strongest force possible, of course. But, you see here, there are supply limits. That's how many men you can have in one province without them suffering from attrition. Attrition is something that eats away your men and slowly kills them. So, you can see as this province here, we can hold all the men. So, if you select everyone again, get them all to walk over there. And then start their marching. Get the timer going. Now, this is the uh, war screen. So you click here. This is uh, your side. You have Lord Robert of the Stormlands. Um, he's a good, skilled fighter, strong man. You have uh, Lord Paramount Eldred Stark, fan favourite. He's also a very skilled fighter. He's got ice. His air is Benjin. So he's coming down. And you have me, Hosatali, but you also have Lord Paramount John of the Vale. He's not that good of a fighter. He can't really command troops that well. But he'll have his uses. His uh, his uh, I think cousin here is a formidable fighter, so um, he'll uh, he'll be useful in the battle. Anyway, let's get the men together. They'll all get moving. You see, uh, not every one of our vassals has joined us in our war. They have gone against us. That's because not everyone has to do as you say. They're likely rebelling, so that if we lose, the Mad King over here will then give them our title but our son here Edmure Tully you get to uh, you get to groom your children for a particular role see for example court or numbers or to be uh, groomed for command or you can save all your money and they will not be as good in a particular stat but we want them to be so we're going to go and groom Edmure Tully for command because this is a war tutorial also uh to improve our marshal here, what you can do is you can set your ambition to win the war, which for some reason is not here. But oh well, we'll just uh, we'll just set to become exiled among men, I suppose, for the time being. Now there is a way. You see how we are allied in this war. The reason we are allied to the Starks here is because. Um, his son, or him, actually, Eddard, because I was thinking of Rickard, but Rickard is now dead. The Lord of the North is married to our daughter. 
So you make alliances like that. For example, we have another daughter here. She is married to the Vale, which is this man in the war. See, we are all allies, which is good for getting us in uh, in wars. So you can uh, arrange another marriage. You can arrange a betrothal here between uh, your son. And there's a load of possible alliances you can get within your land. Now, these are not all within your land, but you can choose anyone you want, really, and try and get another alliance. But you see how alliance is useful in war. That's through marriage. These guys, however, on their marches have been bumping into a few enemies, which is a bit of a shame, because uh, these men will likely be lost. You have, however, captured this man in battle, which is useful. You can capture enemy lords in battle, and your own lords can be caught in battle if you lose. But hopefully these men will get out of there and get over to the main forces so that we don't lose. So, uh, with our prisoner here, we can ransom him if he has enough money to pay for himself. We can execute him or we can release him. If you execute him, will you lose piety, but no one in your country will care because uh, because he's an enemy. So, if we kill him, it will weaken the enemy because there is a, uh, a young lad. He will not be able to do much. So, if we go ahead and do that, lose his piety, but there's one less man to worry about for the enemy team. I see our forces are coming together, our allies are doing their bit. We are however on the front line. We are fighting against Dawn, the Reach and a load of other random guys throughout. Westlands here is not yet getting involved because Lord Tywin doesn't want to, to be honest. Why would he? So now, this is your troops. See all the separate armies, you can merge them together. That will get you an army of one unit. You can then, if you uh, click this reorganize unit button here, you can then edit the flanks. You can auto balance, just try and get it as even as possible, or you can, uh, you can just stick everyone in the middle. You know, if you want, but I wouldn't recommend doing that because the flanking bonuses in battle are very important. So go ahead and leave it like that. You then want to choose your best commanders. You have Brendan T uh, Tully, your brother. He's an organizer, which uh, makes your movement speed a lot faster, which is very useful for attacking people. He's also an unyielding and an inspiring commander. So he is the man you want in the middle. So we'll go and put Brendan in the middle there. On the flank, it's nice to have somebody with a flanker skill, which is this, because they uh, they get a bonus to being on the flank, so we'll stick Dennis there. And the other flank, we don't have another flanker it seems, oh we do, but they're not as good martially. So experimentality, that's uh, that's a useful skill. You have a uh, trickster, morale damage, but defense is lower. You have another flanker. So out of these, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna pick Sir Robin. That's just the guy I'm gonna choose. Now I want to go and I want to engage the enemy down south. In order to do that, I need to get there with as many men as possible. So you see, that's my force. That's the amount of men I can have here without them dying. See here. I'd lose, I'd lose men. I'd lose even more men there. So you want to go, you want to pick a path where you don't lose as many men. So if we went down to there, that's one path. But you can, as we have an organiser, we will likely go through a lot of places very fast and not suffer much attrition. So, I think a good thing to do would be to siege back some of this land. So we'll go here. But because we don't want to lose uh, the 1,000 men to attrition, or 500 all, you can go here where you create a new unit. That will select a, uh, a bunch of men, which will be removed from your army, and as a separate unit. But you don't want it to be him, because he's a commander. Why can't? Alright, why are you doing that to me? Alright, so we'll cancel that. Merge you guys back together. I would like a new unit. Doesn't involve him, right? Him of the Riverlands. Sir Robin. Right. Well, we'll put that two odd thousand, two thousand nine hundred there under Sir Robin, and he can need that. He can then go to the province next door to us, and he can uh, siege that down because he has more men than what are in the garrison. You need more men in the uh, selected army than are in the garrison, which is shown here, to in order to siege it. So they can go there, whilst the main army goes here with uh, these lords, but we don't have Sir Robin here anymore, so I'll go for Sir Jonas. So, we'll get them on the move. 
I'm however losing money. As you could see by uh, this diagram here, that there means we are losing money, which is a shame because if we had mercenaries, they would turn on us. So, losing money is not a good thing. You can uh, put it off for a while by asking the Iron Bank for a loan. So that will gain you 200 gold for five years at a 25% interest rate. So if you go for that, it will put off it'll put off debt for a while whilst we're off here fighting. So, you see here, we're now sieging. They only have 1,100 men. We have 22,000, so we'll easily take it. We can, uh, we can have uh, assault the building, which would lose us a lot of men. If we just simply siege it, we'll not lose that many men. But if we storm it, um, sieging a castle can take months. You see, it's negative 13.5% every 12 days of the morale. So it'll take, if you do the maths, which I can't really do on the spot in my head, that's how long it'll take. You can have a uh, assault it. So we'll go and do that as we have so many men. You can see we have lost, we lost a few men. Not that many, but we lost, lost a few. So we now have that sieged. That will then go towards the war score, which is currently on zero because, um, because um, they've done some stuff as well. As you can see down here, our ally Robert Baratheon is much outnumbered. He's got the Reach army and he's also got uh, these armies here. So us guys, we have uh, the Vale and the North. The North is slow getting together because they're so large, but we need everyone here to get together and come south. So we'll just uh, we'll stay back until they all get over here because we don't want to be taking on these guys all by ourselves. So we'll just let that run. Whilst we uh, seize down this province is here, we'll storm this one as well, and this one. Now, this is now fully occupied, you can tell by the stripes. That means every province here is under our control. They start off with nobody in it, but these 44 men, they are loyal to you. And it reinforces at five a month. So if these guys try to siege it back, these guys here would stop them because they are loyal to you. They did not have a lower the amount of men in your army, which is good. So they can't just simply take it back. The longer you have it, the more men will be in there, the harder it will be to take back. So, we will then go to here. But, as you can see, the force limit. So, you don't want that skull, because as you can see here, the base will lose you 5% of your men per month. So what you want to do, is you want to see uh, what the force limit is, 19.2 thousand. You then take a few men off the army to uh, maximise, or minimise losses, you'll take out that lot. You will then send them over there to help out with that siege which uh, that lot can support it, so you now have enough men here to look after that. See, as soon as they get over, we'll hopefully not have a tick of attrition. Now, you can merge them, you can select, by moving over here, you can select people in charge. It does not affect that as long as you don't let them move. I did not let them move because it was in pause. So now we can seize this. That's all good. We can storm through this one. And we can storm through this one. We now have all that land occupied. Much as imprisonment, Derek. Right, he's now part of a plot. So that's something within your realm. He's plotting to uh, to replace that guy as uh, my Castellan. So we don't really care about that. We're busy at war. And every time I do uh, siege down a province, as you'll see here in a second. Um, you have a chance of arresting people. So, because we were here, we have now captured these people, so we'll take that. We also gain money from the siege, which is also good. We'll now pause that. So, and also, if you take a place, it, uh, the supply limit tends to go up. It hasn't, however, here, I think, because it was already at max from where we surround it. We'll simply uh, take back these other places. We'll see uh, supply limit there, 19,000. So we don't want all the army in one area. Have that even more money, but we have prisoners, and no one's really of use. They're all just normal people, so we're not going to gain anything really. So we'll just hang on to them for a bit. If they are your enemies and you want to kill them, feel free to. They may have good stats. You would lower your the opinion of this guy, Lord Goodbrook. He's rebelling against you, so you would likely get get him imprisoned if you won the war anyway. But we'll just hold his family for now. 
when and win this next siege. If you'll please. Right, so we now have all this land fully occupied, which is good. They cannot no longer raise men there to attack us. Right, as there's a good supply limit here, we'll go to Harrenhal. So if you all march off, hopefully get there with speed. Right, so we can now re-merge our army. Make sure we got all the right commanders. We've got Brendan there, we got Dennis there. We can now march south. Now the attrition, they're up. we are going to suffer it because it is uh, enemy territory. If we get straight down to King's Landing, uh, we'll hopefully avoid a lot of it. So let's get marching, shall we? Ah, this is the battle screen. So you see we have our forces here. We have uh, this wing, this wing, this wing. They do particular things like this is doing a uh, pursue phase because, because it was only a small army, we sort of uh, deplemished their morale. This is the morale. If the morale goes to the bottom, they will leave the battle. So, yes, you can see they lost 90 men in that particular phase. We lost none because we're chasing them off. That's how many men we got in, title on, in total on this side. That's how many men they've got in total. So, there you go. They got whacked. Absolute stack wiped. They had no survivors. We only lost 42 men in order to kill 1,684, which is very good ratio. Changing war score plus 2.5%, uh, which is good. But we are losing the war. So we need to get south and defeat some of these bigger armies. Right, so 32,000 men there. That is more than what we have. But we do have friends nearby. So what you can do is you can bait them. See if they're going to go to attack these guys here. And then we'll be able to go in and support them. Which will give us more men in total. So hopefully our allies will engage in a battle. Because defeating them men in particular will be very good for the war score we are however sieging the capital now this man here being the lord of the enemy and like the main target of war he's defending his castle so if we capture him that would automatically put the war score to 100 and being at 100 they can automatically win but as we're not leaders of the war it would not be 100 because it would not be uh, our leader of the war which is Robert who has the guy in prison, so there's not really any point in that. He has, however, died, making uh, Rhaegar here the new lord. Where's he? He's leading troops in Hollard Hall. Which is over here somewhere, I think. No? Ah. You can see they are going down there to fight them, so... We'll wait for them to engage. You can see here, they will arrive on the 26th of August. They'll leave on the 2nd of September, so they will get there. So if we uh, we start moving, they arrive on the 26th. So if I go to start moving on uh, now, they stopped moving. So we did save them in that way, but we want to ambush them. So um, we'll supply them here. We'll wait again, see if they want to go for it again. Stopping them is a way to avoid if your enemies wouldn't have held long enough. But, you'll arrive down on the 25th of September, you'll arrive on the 20th. So we want to start marching over there, because that will be a battleground, which we want to uh, hopefully try and win on. So, we're going to get there on the 7th of October, which is like seven days. So I think they will hold, because you have these men here coming in to support. You have them men, that's 6,000 men, they will likely hold. So they are holding. We are now in the battle. We have reinforcements coming in, coming in which will arrive in a few days. Even more coming from here. Their leader is however leading the battle. So that would be good. But we only have this flank here. That flank is Lord uh, led by the north. And so is this one. Lord Benjin in particular. Well, that's nice. So we'll go through this war. Just zoom in quickly. See we now have 60,000 men. So not all of them men are mine. But I am leading them. Or at least Brendan is. See they're losing flanks from where the morale's going low. This guy here is about to leave. This man here should leave soon. Right, they lost 16,000 men, but they still got 11,000 running about. Leo Terrell, Terrell died during the battle. So this man, he was actually fighting in the war just then. And he died in the battle, so that's a nice touch. We, however, lost this lord here of Deep Down, so that's a shame. 
but he's now uh, retreating over there. But everyone here is going to follow him, so I'm just going to go marching down south. You see how that positively affected the war score. See, now they're going to go down there and they're going to wipe them out, absolutely destroy them. But you see here how that's, that's under siege, even though it's not my province. These men, however, will protect it, so that's good. But when they win it back, they will be able to uh, start regrowing men there, which we don't want. But I think that's enough for now. Um, thank you for watching. I hope this helped. So I'll see you in another video, which uh, will not be a tutorial on war. So see you then. Goodbye.